Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, a good wherever you are. My name is JP and we continue our crash course for building your first website and going from a complete zero to a semi semi hero because it's going to take you some time to get to a full hero. But this channel can help you all the way there. Now we've created this hero section and next let's have a look at the demo. We're going to do this, which is kind of like an about section, a little bit more about yourself about the coffee shop. If you think of a multi-page website, now what is a multi-page website? A multi-page website consists out of more than one page. You are used to it. You go up to the top where the header is and you click from one link to the next. And usually the famous five are there. Your home page, and then you have an about section about us. Then you have services slash products. Then you have news slash blog. And then the last one is a contact, contact us. These are the five pages that you find on most sites. If you don't have a huge enterprise, actually the content on each of those pages will be about this big. And really navigating from one page to the next just to read this amount of content is pretty useless. And that's why we go for the one pager. What we are doing is we're then restructuring that. The here is like a home page. This is an about us section. Below that, a gallery, which is products. And then we add the testimonial, which is usually on the about page or the home page. And at the bottom, we have the contact us section. Let's go and create this. But I want you to note something very important. One of the many, many features that you're going to find when you are working with any builder in WordPress, and that is that we're going to work with two columns, right? We are going to work with content on the left and we're going to work with the image on the right. And that is done by using an element called the column element. On our page, scroll to the bottom just below the section we created and select add a new block. And then we select create your own. Click on the plus in the middle. It opens the element drawer for us. And then at the very top, you see we have these two elements. They are called grid elements. We have a row and we have a column. Very much the same. And it's going to be difficult sometimes for you to decide which one you want to use. But in most cases, you're going to be OK with column. We can go into a long discussion later on, not in this tutorial, as to why you sometimes would prefer to choose row over column. But we're going to get away with the column. So click, hold and drag it onto your block and drop it. And you will see that as I hover over the various sides, left, right, left, right, left, you see that blue bounding box that indicates you are working with a column. The column also has the same settings like elements and that you access by clicking on this little up arrow here in the top right corner. And it gives you that same familiar toolbar that you've gotten used to now. Now you see each column has a plus kind of, you know, brings up a fundamental thing that you've learned. If I click on the plus, I can bring in elements. Let's start with the easier one, which is just an image that's on the right. All I need to do is go to the elements panel and look for the image, which is an essentials and then click, hold, drag the image and we drop it on the right side. Brizzy gives us this placeholder display, which tells us here should go an image. Select it and we get the toolbar at the top again. Go all the way to the left. Now, as you start working with this, you get an idea of how this toolbar is going to work every time. You select any of the elements that you've brought onto the page and the main function of that element is going to be on the far left in the toolbar. Select that and here we have this little screen again that says bring in the image. Click on that and that opens up the media library. Now, because we already brought in those images, I don't have to upload them. I can go ahead and select the image here, which are these teaspoons with coffee beans and ground coffee. And I select select in the bottom right hand corner. What we want here, though, is that we want this image to display the same full height I brought it in. Currently, you can see if I look here in the thumbnail, I see three teaspoons. But if I look here, I only see the middle one and the bottom two or the top and the bottom. They are cut off. Why that happens is because of the size of the column. Brizzy crops your image to fit the column it is placed within by default. Of course, you can override that. I'm going to show you how to do that. 
Make sure your image is selected, which is the case here, and go to the settings configuration within the toolbar and select that. You can see the width is 100%. 100% in relation to the column. Okay, don't want to go into that, but it's 100% what? 100% in the column it is placed. The height is 50% of the ratio to the 100%. So to get to the 100% ratio that you want it, just select that 50% and type in 100 and you will see it quickly jumps to the size that we wanted. And there you go. That is what we're going to be doing. Your image is done. You select it and nothing more that you need to do here. One thing that we will apply here, just if you're interested, is an animation so it can slide in from the right. If you have a full area like this, like a half column, um, you can decide whether you want to make the image animate or the entire column. I'll just go with the column. If it's wrapped in something like a column, I'll just stick to the column. I'll select the column here. Then I'll go to settings and select effects, which will open the sidebar again for me and give me the effects. And I'll use fade. And I think this is fade right. I'll, yeah, fade right. And that's fine. So I'm going to leave it at that. Then we bring in text on the left. So I click in the plus. I select the plus or I can just click on the plus at the top on add elements and then click, hold and drag the text element onto the page. Below this, I'm going to bring in a little bit more text. So what I'm doing now is because I already have this part worked out. I have the perfect bean to brew. Then I have this little tagline. I have space here. I have line. Then I have another text and then I have a button. So instead of building each one out individually, what I will do here is I'll bring them all in at one time. So I have the heading text, then I have the tagline text, text I drag it there. Then I'll have a line, I think, maybe space first. Then I'll have a spacer. Then I'll have more text. And let me just drag that in. There we go. And then a button. And I do think that there is maybe space between the button and this one. So I'll just bring in a spacer. Now we can delete it later if it is not needed. So this, of course, doesn't look anything like the thing we want it to be. But that is what we're going to do next. Select all the text in the top by triple clicking on it or hitting Control A, Command A on your keyboard. And we type the perfect bean to brew. From here, we go to the T4 topography. We select caveat brush and I'll increase this all the way up to something like, let's go to around 76. Just click outside and you see all of this space. That is the line height that causes that. Go back to T4 topography and here where you see line height, reduce it. And we're probably going to put this all the way back on one like we did previously. The other thing here that I want to do is reduce the spacing between these letters. Go to letter spacing. I just feel they're a little too far apart from each other. Let's see, minus two is a good way to go. And then I'll go and change the color next. Select colors and I choose the second swatch from the left, that one that we brought in. Next text, let's call this one, give your taste buds there daily boost and for this one i will leave it on 16 i will leave it on roboto everything here i'm going to leave the only thing i'm going to change or two things that i will change here is i'll go over here where you see this little icon that says uppercase i'll select that and then i want to change the color give it a little bit of color on this page and again like before select colors and then in the bottom left corner select the eyedropper and then I'll go over to this coffee ground on the right and I'll select one of just a little bit. There we go. And I locked in this color. Slight change in color. I think it looks good. And next actually is the spacer. So what I'll do is I'll click, hold the spacer, drag it up. There we go. Then select the line. Go to the line settings all the way to the left. And all of this is good. I want this line. I want the height at two. That's right. What I want to change is 
the alignment. So from here, alignment to the right, to the left, and then I want to change the width. So I can go to settings and reduce the width here. You can also just click on that line element within the element. Let me try and find that. Now it's too small. Ah, and you see the two little blue dots? Those are handles. So from here, you can also just hold and drag it. That space up here is too big. Select the spacer, drag it down a little bit, as so. And then we do the next text element. Triple click to select all the text and type your text. I'll just paste in the text that I have here. The Organic Cafe has been serving the Papahai Bar community since 2014 with the finest in local and internationally brewed coffee beans. Our passion becomes your enjoyment. What we'll do here is reduce the line height to 1.7. I think it's just a little more condensed and still enjoyable to read. We have the next one is the spacer. I'll drag this down quite a bit. But now I come to a point which I mentioned in a previous tutorial. If you can duplicate, you duplicate. Don't design things from scratch. And I'm talking about a button that's going to do exactly the same as this button up here. Instead then of building out this button to look exactly like that button, I'll go ahead and select this button and then click on duplicate. In Brizzy, it adds another clone to that button right next to it. To move it, click and hold and then drag. And you see we come out and then I drag it down here. But we run into a problem and that is down there, I cannot drop it. What you need to do is on your keyboard, you hit the up and down arrow keys while holding onto that little button. You see, I haven't let go of it yet. So the down arrow key will move your page. And then I just drop it on top of that button. Where is my button, you say? That button is transparent. But if I hover over it, you can see with the hover state, we can see it. So we have to change the color. Select it, and then we go to color. Background, we're going to keep transparent. The text, we're going to put on the second swatch from the left. And the border, we're going to do the same. And the shadow, we're going to do the same. We've created a dark version of this light version. And we don't need to make any other changes to the font or the width or the styling. Everything is done because we duplicated it. Let's just align it, select it, and align to the left. Click on this button and then select Delete from the Options toolbar. And now we have built out this section. Looking again at it, I think the space is too much. Select it and let's delete it. That works for me. And to balance this, because this is a big mistake people make, this doesn't look good. You have this huge image on the right. Then you have this text on the left. But this white space there, it just feels unnatural. To balance this, what you do is you go to the column settings select the settings configuration, and then you see you have this alignment option for the columns content. The easy one here is to select the one in the middle. If I put it at the bottom, I can also spread them, well, cross, which is not a good idea in this case. We'll just put them to the middle. Now you have it looking like this. Pro tip here. When you bring in columns, the content is actually, and look here, I'll, I'll try and zoom in when I do the editing the content is actually very close to each other. And this doesn't really play nice on how it looks. So what we do every time we have content that looks a little bit squashed or a little bit crowded or it just feels off is we add space. And you'll hear me say that all the time. All we need to do is add some space on this side. Let me draw that in for you. We're going to add space. Where is this one? around here all the way to block this content so that it cannot go in there. And to do that, we use the padding sections of the column. Go to the column, select the column settings at the top. And this jacket is getting very hot at this moment. Ah, cold winter mornings. Is it hot? Is it cold? And then select the settings and select styling. And this opens the right sidebar for us, which you are kind of familiar with at the moment. And then under the basic, we have padding. We want to add more space on the right side of this column. So we look at this little sir down here with the right side highlighted, and it's set to 15 pixels. So there is a little space 
of 15 pixels added. To understand what the padding will do, grab the slider and just drag it all the way to the right. And you can see it adds more space on the right. So it pushes all the content onto the left. So it breaks it into more areas and, and space. I'll put it on 15, but I am going to, let me just type in there 15. I'm going to, instead of using pixels, use another value called percentage, which means that 15% of this column on the right will be empty space. I'll select percentage and you see again it just pushes everything a little bit. Hardly noticeable. Hardly noticeable. I'll say it again, but just look at it. It looks much better. Hmm. A slight other pro tip. If you feel it is still way too unbalanced, what can you do just to move all of this content a little bit up? To do that, go to your add elements, grab the spacer, and drop it at the bottom mm, there. And now you see you have this control by just dragging the spacer to give your content a little boost to the top. And I think that just looks a little bit more better. This is a pretty huge design that we have here. If you feel it's too big, you can go to the image, select the image and grab the handlebars in the bottom corners and just drag it down a little bit to reduce it. And then it looks a little bit more manageable for your screen. Good. Control S, Command S to save your work. And then you hit Control Shift P, Command Shift P to go view it on the front end. Really, you shouldn't have any problems with it. We've designed this part and then we've designed this part. It looks good. And you see, because we've cloned that button, that animation is automatically also applied to it. And our, our About Us block is done. But no, it's not done. Remember, we have to go and check for our responsiveness in terms of mobile and tablet. So let's do that. Go to the sidebar on the left and select tablet. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to try and keep it as close as possible to what we saw on the desktop. But the first thing is I'll reduce the size of our text for the heading. 76, let's bring it down to something around 54. That looks good. This one is at 15. I'll put it on 16. And then this spacer I'll reduce. For this one, I'll it's on 16. That's good. And then our button is fine. Again, go to the column settings. Now, in this case, I want it nicely balanced in the middle, but we have a problem. I added this spacer at the bottom. And in this case, the spacer is adding the space which I don't want. So I can reduce it like this. So the content balances nicely. But I'm going to show you an awesome feature which you find in builders, which you have to also get comfortable with. And that is the power to make certain elements appear only on desktop and not appear on tablet or mobile. Or you can choose an element only appears on a mobile device, but it doesn't appear on any of the other displays. Yes, you have that power. So this spacer had a function on desktop, but here I don't need this space. So instead of trying to reduce it, I can just tell this spacer do not appear whenever someone views it on the tablet. And as I click on the spacer, you're going to see the little eye of Osiris. No, it's just an eye. And what happens when you click on this, observe, it just disappears. And now you see there's the eye with a slash through it telling you it's invisible. It's still there, but when people view it on tablet, they won't be able to see it. Let's go back to desktop so you can see it is still there. It hasn't been deleted. I'll click it. There it is, right? But the moment I go to tablet now, it's not there. And now you run into a situation that maybe you want to bring it back. But as you can see, we have no way of finding it on the page at this moment. In the event that you want to bring it back, go to the options toolbar in the bottom right hand corner all the way to the left. And you will see it says show hidden elements. Select that. And now when you hover again over this area, you will see it appears. It is technically blurred out. It's technically not showing, but it shows you it is there in case you want to bring it back. You can just activate it or make it show again. We want to keep it hidden. And I will again go to the options toolbar in the bottom right corner and select hide hidden elements. Why do we hide it? So that we can work on a page where we exactly know how it looks. And that is 
our About Us section for the tablet. Next, we go to mobile. And remember the shortcut key I told you earlier, Control minus, Command minus to go one level down. I think actually this looks fine. If I click on the topography, line height is fine. All of this is good. I'll do reduce this a little bit to, let's say, something like 58. And then that is fine. Again, our spacer is too big here. Scroll down. That text is fine. The button is fine. I'll click on this spacer. You can see the spacer appears in the mobile. We haven't set it to be invisible, but I'm going to use the spacer in this case. So I'll drag it up and we can leave the image. But I think click on the image and just drag the handle in the bottom left corner to fill out the entire column. And that means that this margin here on the left nicely aligns with the content up here. There we go. Control Command Plus and another plus to take us all the way to our desktop. Control S, Command S. And let's jump to our open tab and reload it here to see how it will display. No change for us here because we already checked it. But what we can check now is that responsiveness within the inspector. Do you remember how to get there? F12 on your keyboard. So function F12, I'm working on a new keyboard, so I have to keep checking every time where everything is. Then we go and activate the toggle device bar. Let's first go for our iPad Air. Uh, no surprises, it looks fine there, right? So nice little about our section, and then go to Samsung Galaxy S20. And again, no surprises. Looks good, accessible, readable. Let's close this and close it. You can hit the X close in the top right corner or just hit function key F12 again. We've created our about us section. How about that?